This is code for a project that goes through a website category and pulls the product information out. But what I want to know is would I have been better off writing this in Scrapey rather than doing it all myself with HTTPX and a different HTML parser? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. I've got my virtual environment set. I'm starting my Scrapey project here and I'm going to go into the folder and do the gen spider as it suggests. I've called mine backpacks and there we go. We have our Scrapey project set up. So if I go to tree, see we have all of our Scrapey project files here, including the spider that we just generated, the boilerplate for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up NeoVim and we are going to start within the settings file. This is important because we need to make a couple of small changes. We're going to need to add a proper user agent and we're going to need to change this uh, to false. So let's go ahead and remove this and we'll add in our actual user agent in just a second which I'm going to grab from my other project over here. So let's grab you, paste you in there. There we go. Scrapey will use this user agent for every request. Now we don't need to do anything else to this settings file unless you wanted to work on a actual delay and concurrent requests, not necessary in this case. So let's start with our items. It's always important to work out what you're going to do with your data first and remove these fields. And we do indeed need a name field. We want to mimic this data class here, name, price, SKU, and rating. We want the same data. So we can just copy these down. We'll have name, price, SKU, and rating like this. Now we could leave it like this, but we want to use the item loader, which is go a much more convenient way of sending the data from the website that we've scraped into the actual item itself here. And there's a couple of things that we can do with that with the input and output processors. We're going to be sending raw HTML into these fields. So we need the remove tags and we also need take first, which is going to basically select the first element that matches the selector. To do this, we need to import a couple of things. So we do from item loaders dot processors, we're going to import in map compose, which lets us apply a function to the data that's coming in and take first, as I said, we also need to do from w3 lib dot html import remove tags because this is going to remove the html tags from the field. So we're going to say first of all our input processor we can have one input and one output processor per field. So we'll have our input processor which is going to be equal to map compose and we want to put in remove tags. Now if you had any other functions that you created to clean up the data that goes for this item you could put this in in here create your function name and then just add it in like this uh, clean data or whatever uh, something like that. So now we want to do our output processor so output processor is equal to take first as I said that basically just makes sure we get the first item. So if we actually go ahead and just copy this down because we want to have the same for each of these fields. So this is nice and easy really easy way of sort of just working with the data here. Obviously this is quite basic um, data manipulation but the, this is often not much more than you need to do for this once you've worked out what it is you're actually trying to get from the from the website. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, what am I doing? I don't know, I'm having a nightmare with my uh, talking and doing things at the same time. Hard. There we go, done. So this is our product, our actual item bit done. We can now move on to writing the actual spider itself. Uh, so we're going to go over to our spiders, which is the backpack spider here. Now this code has been written already for us, but we do need to change a couple of things. First of all, we want to use the crawl spider because we're going to be going through page, 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 and we want to do something when we hit links on those pages. So we want to do from scrapey.spiders import in the crawl spider. Now we also need to import in rule from crawl spider because we want to pass it rules that we can do things with. And those rules are going to be using the link extractors. So from scrapey.link extractors, we're going to import in the link extractor class. We use the combination of the crawl spider, the rule and the link extractor to basically tell the spider where to go and what to do when it finds those links. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the actual URL now down here. 
Sometimes I use a mouse even in NeoVim. I'm sure it's fine. I saw TJ doing it. So let's write our rules. The rules are in a list and the first one is rule. And we want to have this as a link extractor. For some reason it won't com auto complete on this for me. Don't know why, but we want allow is equal to, and this is regex. So what's interesting here is this is actually a, um, I want too many there. This is actually a tuple. I'm not sure. I've always just done it like this. I think it's in the documentation, but here we have our first rule. So I'm going to copy this and this is our second rule. So let's have a look at the website now real quick. If we're on the main page here. You'll see that we have the URL has page is equal to. This is how we're going to tell it to follow this link. So we're going to say if the page, if on the link has page equal to, you need to visit that link. So this is what we're going to say. Here. You need to visit that. Now what we want to do here is we want to find the, all the products. So as I had what opened just a minute ago, the link has slash product in it for every single one. So we can put in here product. But when we do this, we don't just want to visit this link. We want to do something when we get here. And what do we want to do as well? We want to have a callback to a function. So this is going to say when we find a link that matches this, the product, we want to go and to this function and do whatever it says. Now we can't have this function called pass because the pass function is actually reserved by the crawl spider. So you need to call this one pass item or something similar. And in here, we can now write the rest of our code to get the item in once we put it in our callback here, pass item. Now you could of course have a callback for this rule as well or have multiple rules to do whatever you want to do when you find those links. Uh, in this case, that's all we need to do. We also need to change our spider from a standard spider to the crawl spider that we have imported. There we go. So we're almost here. So you saw I had the items and we were going to be using an item loader, which I talked about when we created this piece of code. Now to use that item loader, we need to be in our spider file. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of it. So we'll do from scrapey dot, um, or is it from item loaders import item loader? Super, there we go. So we need to have an instance of our item loader. So we'll just do L is equal to our item loader class here. Now this takes in an item. So we need to give it the item that we just created. And then we need to tell it where the selectors are. So selector is equal to response. Now I've covered response. There we go. Now this response is equal to uh, this response here. Let me just import in our item. So we'll do from items, import in our, our item. So this item here, if I go to this, is where our item is here. So this item, you can obviously have multiple items, this one here. Okay, there we go. So let's put this in here. Item is equal to our item like so. Now what we do here is when the response comes in, we give it to the item loader as a selector. Now if you were to go through, uh, like loop through items on the page, what you would want to do would be something like for uh, selector in response.css and then give it your CSS selector and then use this selector as SEL, so like so. Um, so you would use that as the item loader. But in this case, we only have the information on the page itself that we want to get, so we don't need to do that. Now to populate the items using the item loader, we use l.add. We have a few options. We have add uh, CSS, XPath, and value. Value can be whatever you want if you wanted to pass in some extra information, like maybe a timestamp or something. Um, but the one we want is CSS. Uh, so we're going to do this, and it says, as you saw there, field name and then uh, the CSS. So the first one was name and then the CSS selector, which I'll put in there in just a second. So I'm going to create four of these because we have name, price, SKU, and rating, just like the item one here. So these fields, name, price, SKU, and rating need to match here, although they can be in any order. It doesn't matter what order you have. And then from here, we're going to yield out L dot item 
load item like so. So now I just need to fill in the CSS selectors for this, which I'm gonna copy over from my other code as well, wherever they are, which I'm gonna use my mouse for. Again, don't hate me for it. Now, in my other code here, you can see we were doing the text extracting before we were essentially loading the item into the uh, data class. But with Scrapey, what we're doing with the item loader is we're just giving it all of the raw information and we're letting the item itself actually control what's happening here. So we have more control over what's going on. If I come back here, you'll see without these, without the input processor of remove tags, then it would just be, our, we'd have our data, but we'd have all of the HTML tags around it as well. And again, as I said, you can add other ones in here uh, to do anything with your data that you wanted to. So let's come back to our spider and we can see that we have this and we don't need you anymore, save. So this should work uh, and if it doesn't, we will fix out, we will fix what doesn't work. Scrapey, crawl, backpacks, and we should start to see the items coming through. There we go. So I'm just gonna, you can see here, name, price, rating, and SKU. I'm gonna stop this and we'll, we'll do it again. And this time we'll do dash O and we'll call this backpacks.json. Now this is a great thing about Scrapey. It's got all of the, all of the outputs uh, for CSV and JSON built in. So you don't have to do anything else other than say, hey, save everything to a JSON file, save everything to a CSV file. Whereas if I wanted to do this here, I'd have to write a function for it. However, again, you know, I would be writing it, I would know exactly what it was doing rather than what Scrapey's doing. And that is actually what I think one of the biggest issues with using a framework like this, like Scrapey, is that you're basically just doing, working the way that it tells you to. So you have, all, you, you have access to all these great tools, but you're basically doing it the way that they have to do it. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because as I mean, it's most likely, in fact, it's definite that these guys know more about this than I do. So using that is fine. However, if you don't fully understand what's going on behind the scenes here, then you're gonna have a bad time because you're not going to be able to make the right decisions for how to run your spider, how to do your code, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas if you write it all yourself, you know exactly what's going on and you can really tailor the, the uh, solution to the problem at hand. Either way, this is done. We have a new fold, a new file, backpacks.json. I'm gonna zoom out so we can see them all here. Uh, we have an empty, a blank line here for some reason, so something went wrong there. But if I go to the bottom, we have around 478-ish items, all with the information that we asked for. Now, if we were to want to get more information, it would be as simple as adding it in here, add a new field in, and then add it in to the actual spider as well. But that's it, this is done now. What do you think? Would you rather be writing the scrapey version of this, or would you rather write the version yourself, write down, customized exactly what you want? I know which way I did it first, but now I'm looking at this, I could have saved myself a whole load of time if I was doing this commercially using scrapey.